Welcome. Let me show you what you can do with Dollar Tree calendars. Keep watching. So we're going to use the June 2021 picture. And you can see here there are lots and lots of really nice options in this calendar. And I think this is a Simply Blessed calendar. I don't know where the front of it is, but I couldn't find it. So very carefully, you want to tear this out. You can crease it a few times, folding it back and forth and then pulling, or you can use a rotary cutter or your scissors, whatever you wanna do to get a nice clean line. Then we're gonna use some of this foam board that comes from Dollar Tree. These are some stacking blocks that come from the children's toy section. And then I have a variety of ribbons from the Dollar Tree and from Big Lots. I was going for a winter look and a farmhouse look, keeping it kind of basic to match the picture, which I think is simple and pretty. Those little pliers or the little tweezers there, I also got from Dollar Tree in the automotive section in a multi-pack. Okay, so now we have our supplies together and this is just an extra piece of this foam board. I've actually used this on several projects so you can really stretch your dollar this way. Foam board is not as simple to cut with scissors uh, because there's some thickness to it and you can get ridges and snags in it. So using some type of a blade would probably be better, box cutter or something like that. I got my cutter from Dollar Tree, I think, but I've had it for a while, so I can't be completely sure, but I'm sure they have something that's equivalent to this that you can get. I'm gonna take my metal ruler as an edge to make a nice clean line there. And I used a light color marker when I traced it out so that if anything, was left, it wouldn't be that noticeable, like a heavy, thick black line wouldn't, you know, that would really stand out. So I just went ahead and did it with a light color because to be honest with you, I couldn't find my pencil. So you're gonna turn over the poster board and then cut through the back layer. And then you can see there, I have a little struggle. My blade's getting dull, but you can clean that up. So here's gonna be our backing for our beautiful little picture. And I, I'm gonna tell you, you can definitely still see the lines through here. So if that bugs you, I don't know what a solution for that would be. It's not incredibly noticeable once the glue dries, but it's still kind of there. You can see the shadow. So use whatever kind of glue stick you have on hand. I have a variety always in my reach. And we're gonna try to center this down as good as we can. You know me and this wooden ruler, I'm always using this to make a nice flat board. And I do have a little crease that still managed to be stuck in there. So I'm just, with this glue stick, you can gently kind of peel up and then press those out. And even when that's all said and done, for some reason, this particular one was giving me a little, <clears throat> little trouble. So there are some ridges in here that don't come out, but I'm fine with that. You know, it's farmhouse and farmhouse is not perfect. Don't have to worry about those little jagged edges that I have down there because we're going to make a frame. So using these stacking blocks, go ahead and do a, a dry run and see where you want these to go because they don't fit exactly. You're going to have some overhang on both ends. So just kind of get your idea of where they're going to go. And then go ahead and add your glue and put these down. I'm just using hot glue because it's, it's easy and it works fast and it's perfect for this type of project, I think. I think what I'm using right now is the Gorilla Glue Sticks. But I do have Dollar Tree glue sticks in there as well. Just depends on what I had the last project. So you see that there was some overhang and that's okay. And then try to get these as straight as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect and you can certainly use something square here to line them up if you would like. I do have that one that I'm playing with. It's kind of out of line, but I'm going to peel that up very, very gently and then put it back down there in the right place. 
Simple enough, right? We can fix those little boo-boos. Okay, so now we're going to move on to an embellishment for the top, and I'm just going to take one of these little bows. It's like a scrap bow. I don't know exactly the name of it, but I'm going to take three six-inch pieces. No, these are five-inch pieces of each one of these ribbons that I chose. And I am going to just go ahead and, and cut them. I hope I can find some more of this ribbon. I bought two spools of it, but I'm kind of, I've kind of worked my way through it. And uh, it's beautiful. It's perfect for farmhouse. It's really neutral. And it reminds me of like a mattress ticking, the gray and the white. It's gonna look good, I think, all year long in any project. And the snowflakes, snowflake ribbon here, I think looks really nice with it. It's got that burlap, um, look or coloring so you don't have to have any particular pattern for this bow you just start crossing it over in like a a squished x just put it in here any way you want to i think i started off trying to do a pattern and then i gave up now sometimes you will just literally go cross-eyed trying to keep this stuff straight okay grab it toward the middle walk your fingers toward each other pinching those and then you're going to take Whatever type of a tie you want here, you can use a zip tie, you can use some floor wire, or like I did, just use this little pipe cleaner or Chanel stem, these little fuzzy wires, whatever you want to call those. And then in the process of twisting those, you can go ahead and pull them so that you get some even pieces on each side. Make sure that they're all flipped with, if they have a pattern, that the pattern is on the top. Because sometimes when you're twisting it aggressively, they will get out of order for you. Just go ahead and fix it the way you like it. And you can trim off anything that you want to trim. You can make the top pieces shorter and the bottom pieces longer if you want. You can dovetail them, but I don't think that dovetailing is going to be the thing to do with this type of bow because the ribbon is so thin, so small. So I want to put this in the center. I'm going to make a little platform for my bow. Just gonna cut it off and then squish that down. I think I was trying to cut through the ribbon. Okay, then right in the center, I'm going to put some hot glue and then press this down. Hold it down for a minute. If your bow has any bulk, it's gonna try to pick up, then it's gonna fall off. So just go ahead and trim it. Easy enough. With farmhouse, you don't have to be precise. You want it to look, you want it to look homemade, you know, handmade. So now the easy part, the tag. The other half of that wire that we use, just going to twist it, make a little oval, and we're going to use that as the hanger for our sign. A little more glue and a scrap piece of ribbon or paper, whatever you have on hand. Press that down, protect your fingers, of course. Give it a moment to dry, because that's good, a good bit of glue that I put on there. And then you can flip it over and look at the beauty you made. Isn't that nice? It's simple, it's really quick to make. I think it would be a nice gift for someone. And it's certainly a piece that you could use in your farmhouse decor all year long. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Be sure you follow me on my social media. You can find those links in the description box below. Bye. Today we'll make a Valentine's shadow box. Keep watching. We're gonna use brown decorative shred, some heart grapevine decoration pieces, ribbon from Dollar Tree or the thrift store, whichever you prefer, whatever you have on hand, a calendar page from the Dollar Tree, and this is a frame that I got from Goodwill. I did not pay $9.99 for it. It was originally from the at-home store. 
I paid by the pound, so I probably paid maybe two dollars for this. They are this is a 16 inch square decorative piece. It's a wall hanging, whatever you want to call it. Originally, when I bought it, I thought maybe it was a picture frame, but because it has the clips on there, but it is not. The back is sealed, as you will see shortly. So a little goo gone is going to take this red marker off of here. Also go back over with some alcohol or some glass spray and clean your glass up on both sides. I'm going to cut away the paper backing. just trying to clean up the edges a little bit then I'm taking my metal ruler from the Dollar Tree and bending up those little prongs that hold the backing in place after I do that I use some pliers to pull those out which you will see shortly so I'm prying up the back gently I don't want to break my glass And this is what it looks like underneath. It's got a little bin there, but that's not going to be a problem. I'm going to remove these. They are not stuck down on the frame itself, so that's a good thing. You use some of this white chalk paint. It's linen white. Shake, shake, shake. And my little Dollar Tree brush. And I am going to go over this entire thing. I just give it one thick coat and then put it in front of the fan to dry for a little while needs to be dry to touch because once you put the glue stick on there on top of wet paint it is going to make a mess so be sure that it is completely dry get around your edges too if your frame happens to have um you know some painted edges there just going around there just a little bit and then using my finger to take off anything so it doesn't drip on the backing these are not all created equal. Some of these look like perfect heart shape, and one of those looks kind of flat on top. So I just picked the best three, or the best two that I liked. This is what that shred looks like. You can use any color you like that coordinates. This is such a pretty ribbon. I'm going to make a simple shoe string bow here. And it is going to have two layers. So I'm going to use one of this one, the stripe, and then one of the gingham. Just got to kind of play around with it. Usually the bows turn out perfectly, but for some reason I got it twisted on one side. So I just keep fiddling with it until it's perfect. And then. I want to dovetail my ends, which I should have been wearing my glasses because I was a little confused there. And this is not wired. The gingham ribbon is wired, but it's pretty thick. It's a good quality. It originally, I think, came from uh, Target. So it's a nice thick ribbon. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other ribbon. This ribbon is probably, I would probably say like a medium size because I want it to be something that doesn't completely bulk up the inside of the frame because it's going to be pushing against the glass if it gets too thick and too big. So I thought that th this type of bow would be the perfect, the perfect solution for that. And so I'm just showing you here how you can double up a thin ribbon and cut two dovetails at one. Save your time. So now we are going to combine these together. The colors look really nice together, I think. Take this glue stick, use whatever kind you want. I happen to have got these on a very steep clearance. And the calendar page is too big, as you almost saw in that clip. Um, it's too big, but that's not a problem because we are going to sand it down. Now, if you want to cut, you have a cutting board, a steady hand, you could cut it. 
but I'm going to do the same thing I always do and that is going to be to sand my edges. It's a little bit different because I have to be careful about the backing that is just below that. But there is a way around it. I'm using my wooden side of my wooden ruler to press down and to get the butt, the wrinkles or little bubbles or anything like that out from under there. So I'm just using a piece of heavy cardstock to go under the edge and to keep that sanding block from bumping against my the backing there that's underneath. It's a little bit different than what I usually do. I had to turn it sideways, but that's okay. It works just as well. And it takes a little bit of the gray paint or the gray ink off of the page, which gives it a white kind of aged look, which I like with my decor. You're gonna do this kind of gently all the way around and just pulling off where it's coming off. If anything lifts up very easily, add a little more glue on there, press it back down and just be sure that you clean up your edges. It's important that you take that glue stick all the way out to the edges of your paper because if you don't, it is going to pry back up. When it dries, it's going to pull up. It might possibly curl depending on the type of paper that you use. So just be sure that you can avoid all that by going right around your edges nicely with that glue stick. And see that laying uh, right under the edge. It's not much of a, a gap between the two layers there. And I do not want to scratch it. I think I was really scared I was going to scratch it then. But I got it. You might could even tuck that under. You know, glue it, put the glue on the page instead, and then roll the edges under. Um, you know, that could be an option for you if you wanted to do it that way. You just want to go along and do this all over the entire calendar page until it's done. All right, and so this is how it is going to look. I'm going to attach these two bows together with a little piece in the middle. You can use whichever one you want, but I'm going to use the color of the top bow to do my center. This is going to bind those together, make them look like one bow. Whatever calendar page you use, that's what you want to match your ribbons to. But I think that this one is really pretty. I made it for Valentine's Day, but it could certainly be used all year round if you wanted to. This bow is going to go right in the center top of that calendar page. All right, so now to decide where we want the hearts to go. Play around with it a little bit, see what you like, see where you like it. I'm also looking to see if I would like some type of a bow with a thicker ribbon on it, or if I want to use something thinner. Just kind of playing around to try to get an idea of what I want to do. So I picked two hearts that are almost twins. All right, you could remove your glass while doing this, but I didn't want to because I would have had to figure out how to get those lifters or spacers out. So very, very, very carefully remove these little clips because you can easily break your glass. You might even could put some cardboard paper or something down there to, um, to protect it while you're pulling out these clips. This was kind of a pain in the behind, to be honest. Okay, so now I'm just going to get an idea of how this is going to look with the bow on and how much room I have left in here. And I have plenty of clearance for my bow, but the ends need to be tacked down. So just a dot, the smallest amount of hot glue so that it doesn't show through the ribbon um, as an obvious darker spot. And like I said, with this thicker ribbon, it's going to kind of stay in place for me. It's not going to flop downwards once we get the frame back on it. 
I am going to make some little bows to go on my hearts and this is going to be a shoestring bow just like the other. So I'm going to show you shortly how to do that. Really easy. First time I did it I pulled too much through so I'm doing it again. That's all you have to do. Pull them down to make your little loops even there. Get your strings as long as you want them to be. I want to even mine up, make them the same size. And then a little bit, little bitty bit of hot glue will hold those bows right down to those little wooden heart wreaths. Wreath, would you call it a wreath? It's like a tiny heart wreath. Find your placement, little bit of glue and put those down where you want them. I'll put this one on. Didn't have it exactly where I wanted it. I didn't have the flat side down. They're usually kind of bowed on one side. This one was, so I had to scoot it around a little. Then I'm going to take my shred paper and put that right around the bottom. Just tuck it in there. You can put as much or as little as you like. I didn't want a whole bunch. Now I'm testing it. Y'all excuse my lights reflecting there in the glass. There's nothing really I can do about it. And to put that back on, I'm just going to use some strips of foam board from Dollar Tree. Cut them in rectangles and then for each corner. And then I'm going to use hot glue on the side of each piece that where it touches. So on the long side and the short side of each one to hold it to the frame itself. You can use popsicle sticks, popsicle sticks across the corners if you want to to make like a triangle shape to hold it in there. You can do whatever you like to make sure that this fits back down. You can even glue the inside surface back to the risers that are in there, but I don't want to do that. I want to easily be able to reuse this if I choose to reuse it. And this is thick enough and this Gorilla Glue glue is strong enough to hold this together so I'm not too worried about it. Plus I picked it up and shook it a little bit and it works fine. And this is how it's looking. I'm very happy with this. It's much better than I could have ever anticipated. Such a pretty little sign and you can do this for any holiday really. Any calendar page you choose and Dollar Tree has the best calendar pages. What colors are you looking at for Valentine's decorating your home? Are you doing pale colors, pastel colors? Are you doing bright, crazy colors? A lot of people are going towards purple this year. What's your preference? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.
sunflower wall decor from Dollar Tree Calendar. Keep watching! <music> I've got some sunflowers here, a variety of ribbons and jute, scissors, glue gun, glue, a frame with a plexiglass front, and a calendar from Dollar Tree. This is what they look like. There's a big variety at Dollar Tree and you can get them out of the, I think over with the school, back to school section. So I've just chosen this black with the sunflowers. Carefully tear that out. You can cut it with a razor or scissors if you want to, but I don't mind that edge. Okay, so I'm going to take this frame apart. Just going to take the back off the frame, rather. And the frame came from Dirt Cheap. And there I am. Okay, so we're going to use the back of it. And find placement where I want to put it. And you know, if you want to measure, you can to make sure that it's precise and exactly the same amount, but I don't care about all that. Doesn't matter to me. So I used some adhesive spray from Dollar Tree. Just be careful with that. It can be messy, it can make the page a little damp, and it can tear. I didn't have that problem, so just use my ruler to get the bubbles out. And there's still a few, but I don't mind that. I want to frame it out with a little bit of this jute. Any of you who've seen my videos before know how I feel about the overuse of hot glue. It's very hard to repurpose an item that's covered in glue. So, just want to go ahead and do this with as little as possible. So it's framed around the top and bottom there and then it goes all the way down from the top edge to the bottom edge. I saw a little mark on the paper here. I might have done that when I was getting the bubbles out, but went ahead and used a Sharpie and fixed it. Now you want to take your glass or your plexiglass, whatever you have there, and clean up all the fingerprints and dust. I think my measurements for this frame are 19 by 13. And I wanted it larger because I have plans for the bottom of it. So I'm just gonna, after that's all clean, put that back together. And I wanna use my ribbon across, well, I guess you can call that ribbon. And I use my burlap strip across the bottom because I want to make a pocket of sorts. Here I am just trying it out, trying to get an idea of where I want to put this. Okay, this part I use a little more glue. Not a ton, but a little more. And secure the sides down. I also went ahead and took my stapler and just tacked that down. Had a misfire there, had to go back. Now I want to trim it up. I don't want the back looking bad, and I will take the tags off at some point. And then you choose a variety of ribbons that will coordinate with whatever picture that you chose from your calendar. These came from Dollar Tree. And I'm making a bow. I have decided I'm going to purchase a bow maker or try to make one because. My hands are small and I have to get the fabric so close to my body to hold it that I keep getting out of the camera range. And that's no good for you because you can't see what I'm doing. But if you get an idea here, I have six inch tails on this bow and I have five inch loops. And I'm going to do 
two loops on each side and rather than stacking it after the bow is made I went ahead and chose to wrap it all at one time so I have two layers here in my hands one green and one of black and white um, checkered When I finish making those loops, I'm going to measure the length of the tail. If you see the black strip down there, I'm measuring that to make sure I get the right length. And then I'm taking this zip tie and securing my bow together. So this is what it looks like before it is fluffed. And I've decided I wanna add a little burlap to the top. So I'm just making a simple um, two-loop bow for the top. You can almost see what I'm doing there. And I cut the tail short on this one. That one is going to be tied off with a long piece of jute. And then I'm going to use that same piece of jute once it's tied down to wrap around the other bows. Get a double knot there so it doesn't come loose. I aggressively fluff my bows, so I want to be sure that I don't pull anything loose in the process. Okay, so around the middle and between the tails with the jute, and gonna give that a couple of knots. and then trim off this excess. And I'll use that jute to tie around the pocket that I've made on the bottom. After, of course, I fluff my bow. Just gonna dovetail here. Makes the ends look a little bit neater. You can cut it at a slant or whatever you choose to do. What do you think about it so far? Pretty good? Okay, so here I am just tying it on one side and I'm going to use the other side for the flowers. I'm going to trim them off so I don't have too much stem to fold up. It makes a lot of bulk and I don't want that. I chose these colors because they match pretty closely to what's already in the picture. Just going to tuck those in there and a little bit of extra greenery. Okay, so now that I know how I want it, I'm gonna wire these together. You can use floral wire or you can use um, a zip tie or a little piece of jute cord, whichever one works best for you. See, I changed my mind about that little piece of wire. This just seems to be the easiest for me. Like I said, I have small hands and it's hard for me to grasp a big bunch like that and try to tie it without dropping it and you know it just makes it easier and that's all it is to, is to it I'm just gonna tuck it in there and I'm gonna use a little floor wire to hold it shut and it is perfectly done I hope you like it I hope you try to do something like this yourself because it was easy and thrifted and inexpensive I'd love for you to subscribe. I have lots more. If you have any comments, please put them below. I'd love to hear input. If you have any suggestions for videos, I'd be happy to look at those and give it a shot. I thank you so much for watching. And for those of you who have stuck around, I appreciate you being part of my YouTube family. See you soon. Bye. Here's another Dollar Tree calendar DIY. 
Keep watching. All right, if you take a look in the little card up top, you'll see that this was a project I have done previously. I'm going to link that for you so you can watch and see all the details of how I put the original project together. Now I'm just flipping through another one of these calendars from Dollar Tree and choosing another picture that I want to use. And I think I'm going to use the little red truck. It was a toss up between that and the pumpkins. I'm going to remove the wires that I have that are holding the little bouquet in the side because we're going to change this out with something different. So you better keep watching to see how that turns out. Just carefully unwinding this so I can take it out without tearing my little burlap pouch. All right, so we're going to turn it over, undo the little binders in the back, and lift this off. The front of this is plexiglass rather than glass. So if you have glass, be very, very careful here. Just going to set that aside and begin to remove this picture. In the first video, you can see that I put this down with some spray adhesive, the picture itself, and you're going to see the mess and how I do it differently in just a moment. Just taking the jute off that I had on there before, because we're going to use something different to trim it this time. The spray adhesive is from Dollar Tree, so if you're wondering on how well it sticks down, take a look at this. I'd say it works pretty well. In retrospect, I probably could have just left this on here and just went right over the top, but I didn't know if that black would show through on the lighter sections of the new picture that I've chosen, so I went ahead and tore off as much as I could remove. So see, it was between those two. Eh, I'm kind of a crazy pumpkin lady and I have pumpkins everywhere in my decor. So I thought, why not the little red truck? Are you a fan of the little red truck? Okay, so I've chosen the Autumn Harvest Homegrown. This time I'm going to use double stick tape. I don't want to use glue or Mod Podge because it will show the lines that are on the back, that grid that's on the back. I don't want that to show. So I'm just going to use my double stick tape and put it down. There's a little, I don't know, residue from the picture that didn't come off that's on the edge for some reason. So I'm just taking this little nail file from Dollar Tree and just kind of filing that off. The hole in the top can be easily fixed with a white chalk pen. So I'm just gonna fill that one in. You can barely see it now. I tried to decide whether I wanted to use the original jute again. I also tried some orange jute and some ribbon that had some burlap in it, but I thought that this black, I think it's a satin ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree. I think it works better. It makes a great frame and it looks good with the, the dark, bold lettering on the side. So I'm just using, again, dots of glue at the top and the bottom. So when I decide to redo this, it can be easily removed without tearing my backing up. Easy enough. And don't worry about the uneven edges there because I'll clean that up in just a moment. And just trimming those off. I think there's a way that you can use a lighter to kind of heat bind the edges, but I didn't have a lighter down there, so I'll just make it work like this. It shouldn't fray too much inside the frame, and it'll be indoors, so it should be fine. So to make a more finished edge, I've wrapped that ribbon around the top and the bottom, just around the edge of the frame, and used a little hot glue to keep it in place. Okay. 
Going to be doing that on the top and the bottom. I hope everybody has been able to find these calendars. I know it's been kind of hit and miss in my areas and I was late getting them, but I am very, very happy with the ones that I did get. And of course, the next time they come out with some beautiful calendars like this, I will be buying extras so that I can share them with other people. So I think a lot of people missed out on these. If you don't have these particular ones that I've used, you can always use something else that you like in here. Or maybe even print your own sign. You could use a piece of wrapping paper or anything. So I think it looks nice and finished now. You can go ahead and set that back down in the frame and fix the fasteners back. And again, for details on how to make this bow and how to do the original project, just follow the link and you can see the original. All right, so now I've got to find something to put over here in my side. And I have some thrifted, a thrifted pick with a bunch of different size pumpkins and some, some autumn leaves. And I'm just going to put that in there and use a piece of matching pipe cleaner or Chanel stem. You can use floral wire, you can use um, any scraps of wire, anything that you want to use to hold it down in your little pocket. And this works for me. You don't want to use anything that's too heavy because it will pull the pocket down and your, your floral pick will like flop forward when you try to hang it up. So you want to be sure that it's kind of lightweight and you could always use a little bit of um, hot glue or something on the back, just a few dots to maybe hold that to the frame. It's not going to stick to that plexiglass or the glass. You know, hot glue does not stick well to that stuff, but it will stick to your frame or to your burlap pocket if you need to do that. Then I have another piece of a pick that I believe came from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to add that in the places where it looks like it needs a little extra oomph. Also, this particular pick had some pumpkins that had fallen off, and you'll see me just put um, those back on there. If you have something thrifted, be sure that you pick out the berries that look like they've been picked away by birds. If they're white or sad looking, just go ahead and take that off because you want your you want your projects to look high end and um, unique, and maybe that boutique look then you'll need to remove the things that clearly show that they're old and used. So this pumpkin, in order to make it sit down, I've just decided to cut one piece of it off and put some hot glue on it. And I'm gonna glue it in the middle of my bow. And that is going to complete this project. So this is a makeover for my original sunflower calendar makeover. And I used thrifted items and you'll just have to see how that how that first one turned out because it was really pretty but this one will give it a run for its money I think I hope you enjoyed it I hope you subscribe I have lots more ideas and I, I love farmhouse rustic style so if it's what that's what you like then you be sure that you stick around so you can see more of that through the holidays and then beyond thanks for subscribing and for watching, give it a thumbs up if you're still into that red truck, if you're loving the nice cooler weather. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Let's make a Christmas wreath featuring the Dollar Tree calendar. Keep watching. I'm going to start off with the sign that I repurposed that came from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use this calendar just full of gorgeous 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 pictures shine bright and all that you do is the name of the calendar and this is the, De the December picture I'm going to take these pics that I got 
on clearance last year. I'm not sure which store they came from. These are from the Dollar Tree this year. And these were also thrifted. Just be sure that whichever picks and flowers that you use that they match whatever is in the design of your calendar page. Makes um, a more cohesive look, I think. This is a thrifted wreath that I, believe it or not, got recently. This is to give you an idea of the size. Be sure that you get your wreath all fluffed. Pine stems are not curved or crooked or twisted. And so to make it look a little more realistic, you want to put everything back in order the way nature intended it. And it is a circle, so we're going to have everything going in one direction. Choose clockwise or counterclockwise and just be consistent with that. Some of them go inside, some of them go outside. Lift the ones up that are in the center so that it looks more lifelike. I have not been to Goodwill since March, right before the pandemic got rough. We went back just a few weeks ago and I was, I had so much fun. All right, I'm gonna be using a glue stick on this. An easy way to get that off, it will just sand right off of that backing. You don't wanna use the side that has anything raised on it unless you sand it down because it's gonna show through if you use a glue stick to stick your picture down and you don't want that. You want it to be as smooth as possible. And still with black paper, you can see every little lump and bump as you will see shortly. And you just do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just do the best you can. If you use a glue stick, you are going to get um, a little more freedom of movement. It doesn't soak your paper, so that's a good thing. And it's easier to work with, just in my opinion. You can use double stick tape. You can use, you know, a little bit of hot glue if that's what you want to do. But the hot glue is still going to leave a line that you will be able to see. Since there's no frame to cover up any mistakes, you're going to do the best you can to get this um, nice and neat. I don't want any peeling around the edges, so I'm going, going to go all the way to the edges. This is a jot glue stick. I get them from Dollar Tree. If you go about the time that school is supposed to start back, you can get big packs of these. So it makes them very affordable. Really help you stick on your budget. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Would you agree with that? I think so. Okay, so I'm going to be pressing this down. Trying to keep it in the middle of our sign that's underneath. And then I'm using my wooden ruler just to press out the bubbles. And you can see here there's a little bit of um residue from the glue stick that's on the right side and that's just a bubble that I'm going going over there let's see there's a little little residue so I'm just gonna lift that up take it off a little more glue press it back down you would not be able to do that if you use hot glue because you would probably tear your page but you can see there are some wrinkles in here you just kind of have to work with them if you get a little bubble lift it up press it back down Sometimes when I do a project with the glue stick, um, they turn out absolutely perfect without a wrinkle in sight. Sometimes they don't. It may be the type of glue I use. It may be whether or not I'm in a hurry. It may be the material that I'm sticking it to, but you know, just kind of work with it. It's really kind of relaxing to me, so I don't mind. Okay, the hole in the top where you hang the calendar, I'm just gonna use my black um, 
scratch furniture scratch marker and just fill in the hole there and then also I got a little rough with my ruler so there's some spots that I scratched I'm gonna add a little bit on there so that you can't see those marks anymore and when it dries you can't see it at all yep. so now we have the sign part ready and we have our wreath all flubbed up I'm gonna take my little foam sander and just go around my edges I'm pressing away and down with that just on the edges it's gonna give it a more of an intentional look so there was a little bit of room on the top I'm just kind of fraying that black to give it a, a lighter color like on the sides and on the bottom because it wasn't uh, exactly in the center it wasn't exactly the perfect size so and you can just go back in if your back if your background is black just use a black marker to fix any little scratches or scrapes or if you know you tear it and like I have there I have some little spots that you know have like a little tear or a gap if it bothers you to just go ahead and use a, a black marker and fill it in okay so to hang this on the wreath we're going to take two pipe cleaners I'm gonna put a bit of glue on there more glue than I generally use but I do not want this to fall off and I've already definitely got my money's worth out of this particular sign because it was used in a square wreath that I had and I will link that for you so you can watch that and that was a fall project and I'm reusing it for this Christmas project there's my coffee cup yep real life people got to keep the, the Joe in me to keep going all right we're going to put this on the side but you can put it in the center or anywhere that you like this particular wreath from Goodwill has quite a bit of fallout but it's a pretty wreath I like it it's just kind of messy required quite a bit of cleanup vacuuming so take your pipe cleaners you want to make sure that they are wrapped around the wire not the stems themselves but the base of the wreath and you're just going to wrap those around and that will hold it firmly in place I have two bunches of these poinsettias because it's a rather large wreath and I'm just going to press all of the leaves up to the top and I'm going to cut the stem so that they are at a manageable length. I want to be able to wrap the stems from the pine wreath around them to hold them in place. Because the less glue I use, the easier it will be to dismantle this and use it for another wreath or another season. There's a big variety of poinsettias at Dollar Tree this year. All different kinds of colors and textures there's just in the white itself there's a velvety like the ones I have they feel kind of velvety there's that there's ones with silver centers there's ones with gold centers some of those are sparkly there are there's a red a dark red um, there's gold just about any kind of color you could think of for Christmas flower they have it in that poinsettia so you can decide which one that you like best I just felt like this more neutral color would look better with this particular calendar sign so I'm going to be working on practically I guess the left side and I'm going to be focusing most of my foliage on the left side since my sign is taking up so much of the space on the right I just space out each of those picks and then each of the berry stems and then with the flowers the same thing I'm just gonna space them out I have a new camera holder it's not exactly a tripod it attaches to the table so I'm trying to get used to how close and how far I should be so you, you definitely can't see everything I'm doing here but you could probably get the idea do you see how I wrap the stem of the pick with the stem from the wreath and that's what you do and those berries are on wired stems so you can pick those up or pull them apart whichever way 
Now some places in this wreath, all I have to do is just push the stems into the wreath and it will hold it. And in other areas, it needs to be twisted to stay in place. So the one on top should stay there pretty well by itself. It will be inside the house and not on a, an exterior door or wall, so it should be okay. But for the rest of them, just give them a little twist and press them down in there. You want some of the flowers to be toward the center, some toward the outside, some toward the inside. And you will actually get a better look at that when I show you the pictures that I've taken. And you'll get a better look. This is a pretty and simple wreath and you can make this quite easily and quite quickly. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you are interested in saving money and making beautiful works of art for your home, be sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.
Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. Welcome and welcome back. We're going to start with a pizza pan from Dollar Tree, some flat 2x paint, a glue stick, some ribbon, and a calendar page from Dollar Tree's calendars. We're going to start by removing and cleaning up this pan, take off any glue and residue, and we're going to take the oils and dirt off of it by using this alcohol. I've just got 70% and I use it to clean my projects to get them nice and clean. Then I'm going to use this wreath form that fits nicely on the inside to determine the size of my page. So while my pan is drying, I am going to start tracing and trimming up my paper. I did give that one coat on that pan that's outside drying. I'm going to cut just to the outside of this line just to give me a little more area to glue down and make it a little bit larger. Be sure you make it easy on yourself by turning that page while you are cutting. Now here's the pan. This is how it looks just by covering the edges. That's the only part that's going to show. I'm looking now to see where I need to put my glue. And it is a colored glue that dries clear, so it makes it very easy to use and um, know where you're lacking if you don't get enough coverage. So be sure you don't leave any lumps or bumps in there. We want this to be nice and smooth. So I'm just going to lay it there for a moment, get out my ruler, this came from Dollar Tree, and just measure to try to get it as close to center as possible. I'm going to pat that out and rub it out from the center outward. And then if you have any little bubbles that still remain, you can take a little needle, poke it in there above that bubble, and it will just press right out. It's a good little tip. If there's any little bumps and chips in your paint or places you missed, just go back over with a chalk pen or with a chalk marker or a white marker. A little bit of matte Mod Podge, go over the top, it's gonna keep it weatherproof. It's gonna keep that paper in place too. So now we're going to look at our ribbons and decide what we want to do. These are thrifted and the white one on top came from my wonderfully generous neighbor. So I'm going to take this ribbon and start to work. In the meantime, I wanted to let you know that this red, white, and blue DIY is an open challenge and it is hosted by Teresa and Sammy. It's a patriotic challenge to help out the Fisher House and I will have their Links below in the description box. Please, please go over there and check out their videos. Okay, so I am just measuring out 24 inches of the blue, 24 inches of this ruffled white. And I thought that this blue and white would be so pretty layered on top of this ruffle ribbon. And since it's flat in the center, it's going to make it very easy to do. I'm just going to make a little squiggly light line of glue down the center so that we can Put this blue and white polka dot ribbon right on top. If you make a long thin line down the center, you may have a little bleed through and it's gonna make your ribbon look a little darker. Um, so just do this you know, however you want, but this is what I do and it keeps it from showing and it's a little bit better coverage. You're just gonna press that down as you go, working in little sections so that your glue doesn't dry too quickly because then it's not gonna stick. Okay, all the way down. And then we're gonna look at this checked wired ribbon. Gonna trim that off at 24 inches and start considering what type of uh, bow you wanna make. This is a very simple bow that I've made here. I think it looks good with the simple print from the calendar page, the artwork that we're using. So this is what I chose to use, but you put anything you want. If you like something with a little more sparkle and shine, as Miss Olivia would say, then certainly do something bigger. Go for something bigger. Get out your bow makers, make something fabulous. But for me, the simplicity of this works well with my decor. I have kind of a cottagey, rustic farmhouse decor, and this works for me. So we've layered two of the red and white checkered, and then the layered bow on top of that. I'm dovetailing the ends now. I'm just going to cut the polka dot bows on a slant, the tails on a slant, 
and then we're not going to need that chenille hanger so we're going to clip that off too. Thank you, thank you so much to all of our patriots, to all of our people who have served in the armed forces, the military. You can't, words can't thank you enough for the sacrifices that you and your families have made and it means so much for us to be able to celebrate the day with you and give you recognition for all the wonderful things that you've done. So God bless you and thank you for your sacrifices. All right, so now we're going to fluff our bow up a little bit. Make sure everything looks good. You can certainly make the back bow a little bigger if you'd like, or you can make it, you know, however you want to make it. So we're not going to need this wire. We're going to cut these off. I love my little pliers. It's a great tool to have. I use them almost every project. Then I'm going to pick out some florals and some greenery and stack those in there together. It makes it convenient that those can be divided and placed together like that. Or we can do it on the bottom and this is where I want mine to be. So now you have to consider that it's rather difficult to glue anything down to a piece of metal. So I'm going to use this and it's going to be just, it's just a little scrap of foam. I'm just going to put a good bit of hot glue. It's going to overlap onto the paper and onto the pan. Hopefully it will stay a little some more, a little more securely there. I did use Gorilla Glue Stick. So, um, and by the way, this was done a while back and it's still standing. So that's a good thing. Just gonna divide the flowers up here and add my bow with a little hot glue. And then I'm gonna add some more greenery. It looked like it needed a bit more And I've added boxwood and I've added these little pieces of eucalyptus as well. We always have a celebration, or we have for several years now, at our house for the 4th of July. We have a big yard and a big piece of property where we can do fireworks and the kids can run. And it's just a lot of fun. So I love to decorate for Independence Day. Okay, so you see how I just wrap that around the pencil to make a curl in it. Kind of reminds me of fireworks so I'm putting these down in here maybe sparklers They're very festive just adding them in there and then I'm gonna add a little more red and white I want to make this a little bit bulkier without adding any more greenery so I'm just gonna cut about six inches here of a couple of pieces of this and fold it over and give it a little dovetail So speaking of things I'm thankful for, I am so very thankful that everyone's health seems to getting, be getting back to normal, that families are able to meet up now, um, doors are starting to open for families, and that, you know, I'll be able to see my family this year. It's very exciting to be able to do that and, and give all those hugs that we've missed at the last couple of celebrations. It's good to be getting back on track, I think. I pray that that's what's happening. So we're going to wrap these little pieces of pipe cleaner scraps around the tails in the center and just press those down into that foam. Now I'm going to give you two options for a hanger for this pan. You can use a piece of wide ribbon and just roll it in, just like so. Just double it over. This is very easy. Um, don't worry, I'm not squishing my flowers. They're hanging off the edge of the table. You just add a good bit of that good glue, a little more glue, a little scrap, and trim it up. And this would be a very simple way to do it if you want to do it this way. However, if you have beads like I do, you can certainly step it up just a little bit. So I'm going to start by taking just a length of jute, whatever, I think I probably have maybe 14 inches or so, and I'm going to do a double knot. I'm tying the knot on top of itself to make sure that it doesn't slip out of the beads. And I'm just going to feed that bead down. Now you see the trouble I'm having there getting the bead on? Same here. 
Now let me show you what you can do to make that stop happening. So you add a little bit of hot glue on the end and you twist it in the way that it's already twisted. Just go with it. Protect your fingers. Cut off any little extra. And then now you have a little needle, essentially, that will go right through every bead. It will make it short work. Very easy project to do this way. I've heard others say you could use a tape or a certain type of a needle, but this works for me because it's convenient and it's right there where I'm at. Now, see, I did skip my pattern, but I fixed it. Don't worry. I discovered the problem. Same thing on this end, we're just going to double that knot up on itself. See, I haven't fixed it yet, but it, it will be fixed. I did discover it a little bit late, but I got it. A Little bit of glue over the ends here, and then you can trim off whatever is left. And here you go. Thank you so much for watching. See the links below. And I'll see you again really soon. Bye. We're making a festive Christmas sign with Dollar Tree calendar. Keep watching. Dollar Tree has an array of beautiful calendars with lots of farmhouse and rustic designs. In this calendar, we're going to use the December picture. This is Simply Blessed. And then I'm going to use this Dollar Tree sign. It's just something that was from Christmas. It's a square. So here are my ideas of some embellishments for this sign. I've got some picks, and some pine cones, and berries. You can use whatever you want, but I think these reflect what's in that picture, so I think they'll make a good fit. I'm going to remove this hanger from the sign. It's just jute and it's got a little plastic backing. You can just press that through. You can use it again if you want. Then I just started to peel this off because you can see where it was overlapped, but it did not come off very nicely. So yeah, I didn't fool with that for too much. I'm gonna take off this little, I think it's a sun and we'll save it for later. So you see it's almost a perfect fit. I'm going to go ahead and tear off, keeping that edge as clean as possible. You can cut it if you want. And then I'm just going to fit it over here. I've decided since the page is white to go ahead and use the back so that you don't see all of that design through. I'm going to take a pen or a pencil, whichever one, and trim it out. We're going to cut that excess off. Be sure that you use the back of it because you don't want to see any ink on the front of your picture. I'm going to use a trusty old glue stick and just give a nice even coat of that glue stick all over the back. You can see I've got a very nice coverage there. I've done it this way so I don't have to put any on that paper. You can use the Jot glue stick to get at Dollar Tree if you'd like. I use it often. This is just the one I had on hand nearby. Okay, so I've got it centered and I'm just going to press it out, make sure there's no bubbles or wrinkles. And then using my wooden ruler, I'm just rubbing it across there to make sure that everything is nicely stuck down to that sign in the back. The hole in the top where it hangs, you could just take a paint pen or a chalk pen or chalk marker and just fill that in if you'd like. And I did have to do that more than one time because it, that particular pen I used was not very good. Using my sanding foam block from Dollar Tree, I'm going around my edges to give it a nice finished look. It's not a very long process and it is a very satisfying process. It slowed it down a little bit so you can see what happens here. It just shears it right off the edge. 
and then the sign if you have the glue all the way over to the edges the sign is going to look like it was made this way you'll never know that it was a DIY just a very nicely comes right off. You certainly don't have to use, do this step if you don't want to, but just be sure that you've glued your edges down so that it won't peel up if you choose not to do it. And the good thing about a glue stick is you don't have to wait for anything to dry. All right, two options for bows here. This is the one I started with. Rather than editing it out, I thought you might like to see what your options could be. So I've got three different ones here. I've got the bow maker tool that I made. I'll link that video for you. And then I'm just going to measure out my tails and they are about eight inches long. And begin making some loops. You loop the fabric over or the ribbon over and you just pull it down in between the two dowels. If you have a bow maker, if you've purchased a bow maker, then you're probably already familiar with how to make a, I, I'm just gonna call it a rather simple bow. We're going to do three stacks of two loop bows. Well, I guess it would be one stack with three two loop bows. There we go. So I'm just showing you this in slow motion in case you haven't used it yet and you're still getting used to how to do it. And I've got a little closer look for you here. You choose your next ribbon to go on top. And when you have a ribbon that has two sides that are the same, you don't have to flip it in the middle, but you do need to twist it if you have a printed side and a non-printed side. So that's what I've done here. You just pinch it and twist it in the middle so that your pretty side is up. And then trim it off. And then we're gonna do the same thing for that checkered ribbon. Each one of these bows is a little bit smaller going toward the top. So there's a five inch bow, a four inch bow, and a three inch bow. The three inch bow is on the top and the five is on the bottom. Grab it in the middle, pull it off, and then get your pipe cleaner or your chenille stem, your wire, whatever you want to use, and you're going to twist it while you hold it tightly in the center. You want to twist it tightly so you can fluff your bow out. So when I did this, <clears throat> I decided that it was a little too much for what I wanted on this simple, simple sign. So I've decided to take it apart and do something that's a little more simple. So if you don't have a bow maker, here's an option. I saw this bow on Olivia's romantic home and she calls it the Olivia bow. I've just made this bow, I folded it over on itself. You don't have to twist anything so that there will be two loops on either side. Then you fold it get your center and make tiny cuts in the outside. I'm just pretty much going through the wire and just a tiny, tiny bit of that fabric. Then I'm gonna twist it up with this wire until I can get the next layer ready. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. These are wired ribbons. Flip this over and then one more time. There's two here and two here. So I'm going to find the center and put that loose end on the outside. I don't know that it makes a difference, but I put it there. And then notch the sides again. So now we're going to stack these two together. Press the wire right into the little notches and then you want to twist it tightly in the back and then start to pull your bows and twist. Pull and twist. Just pull on that little tail out there too. Pull and twist. This, I loved making this bow and I will definitely be making more 
like this. So if you're a fan of Olivia's, go over to Olivia's Romantic Home and she'll show you how to make all kinds of cool things. Okay, that little tail was just a little bit too short, so I just snipped it straight across to kind of hide it. And then it's kind of raggedy on the end here, so I'm going to make a little dovetail. And always, of course, finishing off the ribbon tails with the dovetail or slant, just as long as you don't have a frayed edge there. I want to put this in the corner. Now I have to make some tails. I'm going to do that with both of these. I'm just pretty much folding it in half and then pressing it to the side, pulling it to the side just a little bit, dovetailing it. So you can see how those are made. Pretty easy. You want to put them together with a little bit of hot glue. I put the, the checkered part on top since the checker is on the top of the other bow, but it doesn't really matter. It's just my preference. And I'm going to attach that and kind of make a little run through of how I want things to be on the back there. I'm going to take some hot glue, put it up in the corner so that it is not obstructing my good tidying sign. Give it just a second to sit up before you start pulling on it. Then you're going to add some glue and start placing down the, the picks or the cones or whatever type of greenery you have that you want to put there. You can get these little pine cones at Dollar Tree in a bag. I think they are in the floral section, but they may be with the Christmas stuff. It probably just depends on your store. The polka dot ribbon came from Dollar Tree. The plaid ribbon came from the thrift store. The two little picks that are on the sides came from the Target um, Bullseye Playground last year, but I actually got them at Dirt Cheap. And fluff that bow. Okay, so I wanted to put a little something extra here in the top, and I'm adding one more of those little picks there. Now we gotta make our hanger. So I'm just cutting a piece of jute, and I'm going to glue it into the original holes in the back with a little piece of scrap ribbon to hold that in place. And there we have it. This is our first Christmas wreath, our first Christmas sign or decoration for the holiday season. I will be having a Christmas 2020 series, so be sure that you subscribe and stay tuned to that. I appreciate you stopping by, and I will see you again real soon. Bye.